this morning as we begin this morning worship service. It is a grand opportunity for us to be here this morning and we give God praise and honor and glory. Could you just come forward this morning?
for this opportunity. Hallelujah. Thank you for having brought us here on this day. Oh God, we commit all that will be said and done to you. We look to you, we lean upon you, and we we'll give you thanks for hearing and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may Amen. return to your seats as the praise team continues to Let's sing that song softly. Sunday, and this morning our moderators are our Deacon Dwayne Lewis and our brother Ricardo Thomas, and I invite them to come along at this time. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God is good. And all the time, hallelujah. Good morning, church. Please stand for prayer. Heavenly Father, we would like to thank you for allowing us to be here in your sanctuary. Another beautiful Sunday morning, Lord. Lord, we thank you for life, love, blessings, new opportunities, Lord. Another chance to do another good thing, Father God. We thank you for all you have done for us, all you are going to do for us, and especially for blessing us, providing for us, protecting us, Lord. We ask that you please continue to do these things for us and to also give us the wisdom, knowledge, understanding, memory, street, Street smart, common sense, and quick thinking as well, Father God. Father God, I pray that today's service will be a wonderful and especially productive one, Father God. I pray that somebody may get saved today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come here to sing. We come. Well, I'm going to leave that part for the praise team. So at this time, we. I'm going to ask the praise team to come forward. Oh. The, 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 the hymn is titled, Yield Not to Temptation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yield not to temptation, for he lives in each victory to help you.
cannot do it on my own. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By myself, it won't work. Hallelujah. Lord, I know that I need your help. Hallelujah. I press towards the mark. Hallelujah, somebody. We have to continue to press. Hallelujah. My soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit prays.
Righteousness is what I long for. Righteousness is what I need. Righteousness, righteousness is what you want from me. From me.
to God. Somebody say praise the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Put your hands together for our King. Put your hands together for our reigning King. He's God all the time and He's God all by Himself. Praise and glory be to our God, our Father and friend and we give god thanks and glory and honor for this wonderful day that he has made this brand new day that we have seen and god is indeed an awesome god he is a good god and we say that because we can testify we are in the land of the living he woke us up this morning clothed in our right mind and he has brought us here what a wonderful God. One more time, put your hands together in celebration of the goodness of Almighty God, our Father and our friend. We want to say welcome, welcome to one and all. Welcome to those who have joined us on the World Wide Web. If this is your first time joining us, we say welcome to you. To you at the Greater Pomo Open Bible Church here located in St. Catherine, Jamaica. It is really great to have you worshiping with us those in person if you are here worshiping for the very first time we're going to kindly ask of you to stand just stand right where you are if this is your first time in this house worshiping with us here at the greater portmore open bible church stand please stand right where you are all right i'm not seeing all right those who are celebrating recently celebrated a birthday any birthday person in the house this morning Recently, all right. Just a small put your hands together for her. Please. Just a small. Only keyboard player standing to play or you're celebrating a birthday. Alright, yes. Both. Put your hands together for them. Please, please play us a song. Play us a birthday song. Wedding anniversary. Do we have any persons? Persons? All right. Celebrating wedding anniversary. Sister Jemison. Put your hands together for Sister Jemison. Praise be to God. How many years, Sister Jemison? 33. 13? All right. 13 years. Put your hands together for 13 years. Mr. Music, take it away. your marriage and your family please convey our kind regards to your husband praise be to God this morning when my mother is here worshiping with us this morning this is Iris McDonald Mr. Mac stand and wave to us there goes 
Really hands together for her. Bless her. Really receive her. Thank you. And please pray for the other Sister McDonald. Sister Brenda McDonald is not feeling well. So she is not here today. Amen. Amen. Somebody requested prayer for someone as they came in this morning. And we're going to pray for that person. A young lady with the little boy in the gold shirt, we're going to invite you to come forward. Yes. Praise be to God. And if you're in need of prayer, if you have a situation, just stand right where you are. Mr. Engineer, I'm being told that they're not hearing me clearly. Not sure if it's me or the microphone. His blood will carry me. Oh. Something that is overwhelming, something that is bigger than us, something that we're asking God's intervention. And I want to say to somebody that your marriage will last. There's somebody here, there's a family here that is wondering what is going to happen to my marriage. Should I continue in this marriage? Should I continue in this bringing together but i want to say to somebody this morning that which god has put together let no man cast the sun let no man break it let no man attempt to break it and uh, we stand with you this morning with your marriage and your family the bible says one shall chase a thousand and two shall put ten thousand to flight and that which has come up against your marriage and family that which has come in one way we declare today in the name of jesus christ of Nazareth that it shall flee seven ways the storm that has come up against your marriage and family will cease 
Let us pray. Let us pray. Your marriage will last. Don't walk away. Don't let go. Your marriage will last. Our Father and our God, we thank you for today. We thank you for this time. You have invited us to come and to come boldly to the throne of grace. And so, Lord God, even now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, we put Miss Blake before you, her son. Lord, we don't know the situation. We don't even know them. But we thank you that you know them, you know of them, and you would have brought them here today for this time. And so, Lord, I pray that you would breathe upon this young woman and breathe upon her son. And Lord God, we pray for transformation. We pray, O oh God, for direction at this time. And we ask, O oh God, as only you can, that you do for them that which no other God can do. And so, Lord, we thank you for hearing. We thank you for doing that, O oh God, that which you have been doing, and Lord, that which you continue to do. Lord, for each person standing, we've come to you again. Out of your invitation, we have come in confidence. We know that you are a caring God. Lord God, we know that you are conscious of our challenges. You are conscious of our pain. You are conscious of the varying situations. Whether those who are standing or those who are not standing. You see and you know. And we're gathered this morning in the house of bread, the house of hell, the house of hope, the house of healing. Heal somebody's pain today. Whether those pain be physical pain or those pain be emotional pain. We ask, dearest Father, that you will intervene. Intervene behind our smiles. Men look at on the outward appearance. But dearest Father, Dearest Father, you see our hearts. And so, Lord, we ask that you will intervene. Those who are standing for healing, heal somebody's body physically. Those who are standing for a social problem, intervene in the name of Jesus. Those who are standing, oh God, whatever it is, whatever burden, whatever challenges, whatever hurt, whatever pain, we bring them to the foot of the cross. Because we are conscious, we are confident that your blood will carry us all the way. Oh God, he who had begun a good work, we're confident you say you will complete sin. So for every person that is standing, for every person that is aching, for every unsurety, like Jehoshaphat, oh God, we don't know what to do. We don't know where to go. We don't know how to solve this problem that seems like a mountain. But like Jehoshaphat, we will look, O oh God, to the hills. The psalmist says we will look to the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help cometh from God. And so, Lord, we say send help today. Send help today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So our faces differ. So our challenges, so our pain differ, but we thank you that you can soothe our pain. We thank you, O oh God, that you promised them not to leave us nor forsake us. O oh God, that situation, that daughter, that son, that husband, that family member that is in need of help now, we send help to somebody. O oh God, don't pass us by. O oh God, we will not go back home. With the burdens, oh God, that seem so heavy. With the minds that seem so confused and uncertain. Oh God, we leave it all to you. We put it all at the foot of the cross. And Lord God, we say help. Help in the name of Jesus. Help, Lord, help. Help, 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 help. Somebody say help. Somebody say help. Somebody say help. help. Somebody say help. help. Somebody say help in the name of Jesus. Somebody say help. Somebody say help, Lord. 
Somebody say, help, Lord. Intervene, Lord, Lord, Lord. You say we should call, we call. You say this poor man cried, and you heard, and delivered him from all his fears. He said, many are the affliction of the righteous, but, oh God, you are the God that deliver us, deliver them from all. Deliver somebody today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Give somebody a testimony today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Strengthen somebody today. Yes, Jesus. Oh God. Oh God. Let us not give up. Oh God. Oh God. Let's hold on to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Savior, the one who has called us and the one that has promised to keep us. Lord God, you see the pain. Oh God, Lord God, break the edge of that pain. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, the sharp pain, that sharp pain, that thing that is causing the pain. Lord God, sometimes you choose to remove it. Remove it in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, it is your will. Lord, if you don't remove it, oh God, dull the edge of that pain, whether it be emotional pain. Somebody has come here this morning pained and hurt. Oh God, oh God, we lift up that person. We lift up those persons. Oh God, he said, iron sharpen it, iron. Oh God, and Lord, a man will help to lift the countenance of his friend. And oh God, oh God, we lift the countenance of a brother, of a sister this morning. Oh God, oh God, oh God. We put all our fears and our cares to you. And we are confident that you have heard our prayers. We are confident that you have answered our prayers. We, have conf we are confident that you are seeing our tears and help is on its way. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus and say, thank you, Lord. Help is on its way. Praise be to God. You may be seated. You may be seated. Praise be Praise be Hallelujah. Can somebody just praise the Lord this morning? Can somebody give God the highest praise this morning? Great things He has done. He is the same God yesterday, today, and forever, and He will always remain the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Coming to us this morning with the scripture reading, we now invite Brother, Brother Johnny Butler. Uh, the scripture reading is taken from Matthew 25, verse 1 through to 13. Matthew 25, 1 to 13. Good morning, church. Please stand as the scripture is being read. Our scripture is taken from Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13. Please follow while I read. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, who took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. 
but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they are slumbered. They are slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lambs are gone all. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know, neither the day nor the hour, wherein the Son of Man cometh. This is the word of the Lord. We honor it by saying, Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Brother Ajani. The Bible said, young men, I call upon you because you are strong. Hallelujah. It is now time for dedication of babies. So if you are here, please make yourself ready. Come forward, please. The dedication of babies. Okay, we will now invite, we will now have, we will now have a special, have a special item from Sister Julian. Church. You may be down and feel like God is somehow forgotten that you
Is that an amen? Somebody, somebody, you're not going to leave this place the same way you came. It is no time for the spoken word and God has always prepared a word for his people. Our speaker this morning is one of our deaconesses, Sunday school teacher. He's a Christian Certainly for some time, an educator by profession. The wife, she's married. Wife of Deacon Steve 
butler, mother of Joel and Johnny Putnam. She loves the Lord. And our speaker comes to us this morning, the person of Deaconess Natalda Butler. Put your hands together and welcome the woman of God as she comes to share. God is good, and all the time, amen, amen, you know, some assignments are usually easier than others, amen, but I crave your prayers this morning, because the word said I can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength, hallelujah, praise the name of Jesus. I give all glory to God this morning. It is indeed a privilege and an honor to stand behind this sacred desk to give glory and honor to the King. I greet our pastor and Sister MacDonald. I greet the elders, the leaders. I greet the leadership of the youth department, saints of God, Visitors, friends, those watching on the world wide web, I greet you. I believe my husband Steve is watching. Love you, honey. Amen. <laughs> he wasn't able to be here because of other duties this morning, but I give God thanks. Let us pray. Father, your people come this morning for a word. But I'm only a vessel this morning, oh God, wanting to be used by you. I pray that self will decrease this morning, will be totally slain before you, and that you alone will be exalted and glorified. Father, speak through me, oh God. Give your people receptive hearts this morning. Mighty God, we pray that at the end of today's service, that we will all say it was good for us to have been here. Glorify yourself this morning, Jesus. We give you thanks. In your name we pray. Amen. The theme for the word this morning comes to us. The title of the theme is, It's Time to Be Ready. It's time to be ready, walking in the footsteps of the wise. Hallelujah. The word this morning was read earlier, taken from St. Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. In order to fully understand the passage, we must understand traditional Jewish marriages. We must understand marriages in the Jewish setting. And indeed, it is something that is quite different from our Western culture. Marriage was looked on as more of an alliance for reasons of survival or practicality and the concept of romantic love remained a secondary issue. Yes? I mean, in our Western culture, we have to fall in love first. And we are hot head over heels about this, about this person. But in the Jewish culture, I mean, that wasn't so. Romantic love basically grew over time. This marriage had a three parts. There were, these are Hebrew words, so you're going to have to forgive me if my pronunciation is not on par, but I hope that it will be sufficient for us to understand. Amen? So, the Jewish wedding or the Jewish marriage had three parts. The Sheduka, the Betrothal, and the Neshuin. The Shaduka was the mutual commitment. 
It was a time when that is referred to as the preliminary arrangement prior to the legal betrothal or the engagement. In ancient times, the father of the groom often selected a bride for his son. And we see this in Genesis chapter 24, verses 1 to 4, where Abraham selected a wife for his son, Isaac. And then after this mutual committal period, we enter into the erasing, which is a time of engagement. Before the engagement, both bride and groom were separately immersed in a special water, symbolic of a cleansing. After the immersion, the couple enter the marriage canopy, and it is the symbol of a new household being planned. And this establishes a binding contract. Here, the groom would give the bride money or a valuable object, such as a ring, and a cup of wine was customarily shared to seal their covenant vows. In this public ceremony, the couple entered into the engagement period, which would typically last for one year. Although they were considered married, they were not, they would not live together, neither would they engage in sexual activity. So different from us in, the, in, in our Western world, not true? Yes, man. You know, some people say, boy, I'm not buying a pussy in a bag, you know. But you see, in the Jewish custom, this was never about any puss in a bag. But it was that which ought to be done. And it was respected. And it was followed through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. During this time, the couple would be considered legally married, although they, were not, they would not consummate their marriage. Yes? If at any point in time there should be an annulment, then they would have to be divorced legally. And this divorce would have to be initiated by the husband. During this one year period as well, the husband or the groom would also be preparing a place for his bride. Amen? And he, the groom, really doesn't know when his father would have given him the go-ahead because it was the groom's father that gave him the go-ahead and said, yes, it's time for you to go get your bride. Are we understanding what's taking place here? Now, it was the duty of the bride at the time. She knew that she would expect her groom somewhere about one year. And so it was her duty to be prepared. It was her duty to do what it takes to ensure that when she hear the fanfare and the horn, I mean the ram's horn sounding, she knew that her husband was now coming to get her and her responsibility was to be ready to go with him. Praise the name of Jesus. Now the final step in this marriage would be the neshuin. And this was the time when the father would give the groom, as I said before, the go ahead to go and collect his bride. And it is at this stage that yes, there would be the marriage supper and they would consummate the marriage and begin living in the true in the full-fledged marriage. Now, what is this text saying to us today? It is clear, brothers and sisters. The text is saying to us 
that we ought to be like the wise virgins. Yes? So there were ladies that were preparing to meet the bridegroom. But at the same time, there was a distinction between among these set of virgins, ten to be exact. But the word of God said five of them were wise and five were foolish. What is it that made them wise and what is it that made them foolish? I believe is because of their decision. I believe it's because of the choices that they made. Hallelujah. And their choices were regarded as being wise as well as their choices were regarded as being foolish. I say to us this morning that in following the footsteps of the wise, I want us to understand, brothers and sisters, that the wise understood their purpose. It said, then the kingdom of God of heaven shall be likened unto ten virgins that took their lamb and went to meet the bridegroom. Hallelujah. The wise understood that their only purpose is that they must go in to that marriage supper. Hallelujah. They were prepared. Hallelujah. In their minds, they set out for one purpose and one purpose only. And that was to be with their groom in this marriage supper. They also know or they knew that they did not know what time of day that he was going to come. They did not know when he was going to come, but they know that he was going to come. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I wonder if as the bride of Christ, we understand brothers and sisters that we are in a period of waiting. I wonder if we understand as young people that we are in a time of waiting and that we do not know the hour, we do not know the time, but we know of the fact that he is coming. And therefore, the wise, they were intentional about their preparation. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I want to tell you something about, this is a true story. Recently, there was a young man, he had an exam to do. And so, this young man's mother would often say to him, Son, you need to prepare for your exam. Son, how is the preparation for your exam going? Son, are you studying for your exam? And the son would just look at his mom and him say, Mommy, we are worried yourself for mommy. Easy, no mommy. A simple one to that mommy. No worry yourself. Hallelujah. And so days pass by. And the mom knew in her heart that this son was not doing adequate preparation. But the only thing this mother could do was to say, son, glory to God, remember you need to prepare. Mighty God, I want to say to us this morning that the onus of preparation to meet this bridegroom is upon us individually. Hey, God. And so the day of the exam came and the young man went in to do his exam. But deep down in the mother's heart, she continued to ponder and she knew that in her deep recesses of her heart that her son was not adequately prepared for the exam. And so at the end of the period when her son came home, she saw the look on his face. Because he did not come in and said, yes, mom, I aced the exam. But the mother knew what was going on deep within her. 
And so late in the evening, she called her son and she said, Son, how was your exam? With a little dejection in his face, the son looked at his mom and he said, Mother, I missed the exam by only one point. And so, of course, we know that on that sheet of paper, there was stamp failed on the son's exam. Mighty God. And this was as a result of his foolish choices. This son had no one to blame but himself. Because he did not heed the warnings of his mother. The wise brothers and sisters did not leave their preparation to chance. They were not passive about their preparation. The wise was intentional about what they are about. They knew that in order to meet the bridegroom, they had to be prepared. They had to have that extra cushioning just in case the bridegroom arrived in the night time. That they were ready to take on, hallelujah, the terrains of the night. They needed their lamps and their lamps had to be oiled. Well oiled, I should say. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The foolish, on the other hand, they were just, you know, in Jamaica, we'll say, Erum, Skerum. They looked the part, but they were not serious about it. They didn't understand the mission. They left their preparation only to chance. What a risk to take in a time like this. Brothers and sisters, I want to ask us this morning, are we preparing? Are we intentional about our preparation to meet the King? Are we leaving, hallelujah, the meeting with the King to mere chance? And so the wise brothers and sisters, they took their lamps. And not only did they took their lamps, but they took extra oil with them. Glory to God, they were not leaving. Mighty God, this important assignment to chance. They knew that they had to make it in. Comes what may. I don't care if he comes in the morning. I don't care if he come at afternoon. I don't care if he come when the sun is shining. Or he come at the midnight hour. One thing I know is that the king is coming. And I must be prepared to meet him. Oh God. And I want to tell you somebody, the word of God said at midnight, there was a cry. At midnight, there was a cry. But before the cry, my God, the ten virgins fell asleep. I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, that in my own interpretation of this text, I see this falling asleep as us going about our daily business. We went to our separate jobs. We live in our own homes. Glory to God, we entertain or we do whatever we must on a daily basis. I want to ask us that in our daily, in our daily sojourn, are we still in preparation mode? Do we only prepare on a Sunday morning when we gather with the believers and so we need to just look the part? Hallelujah! Do we leave our preparation only for Saturday night when we begin to look the part? Is it that we are intentional 24 7s? Hallelujah! Seven days a week. 
24 hours of the day i want to say to us this morning church that we must be ready at all times and so the day of reckoning came and the trumpet sounded and so the wise glory be to god they went in, they participated. Glory to God, they, en they enjoyed that which was prepared for the ones who were prepared. And so at the time, the foolish arose and realized that, listen, you know, it's midnight and guess what? Our lamps are going out. My God, we don't have enough oil to keep us for the journey. We don't have what it takes uh, to go into the marriage supper. And so he said, wise people, give us of your oil. Give us some of what you have. There are many of us who will tell the stories that we were brought up in Christian homes. There are many of us who tell us that we had a praying grandmother or we had a praying mom or a praying dad. But I want to say to us, Church of God, that the prayers of our parents can go so much, hallelujah, no further. Because the onus of the preparation to meet the bridegroom is upon us individually. We shall give an account individually to the Lord for the work that which we have done. And so by the time they realized what was happening and that time had caught up with them. And by the time they say to the wise, listen, give us some of what you have. The wise say, I'm so sorry. The time for that has passed. Glory to God. The time for that has passed. And so you would have to go and seek your oil elsewhere. And so while they went to get it right, the bridegroom came and those that were ready went in to the marriage supper and the door was shut. What are the implications of this text for us this morning? We need to understand, we need to know our purpose. Hallelujah! We need to know our purpose we need to realize that right now we are in the time of engagement we are in the season of engagement and the coming of the Lord is at hand and there has never been a time hallelujah that we are seeing like as we are seeing now in the Olivet discourse so the disciples spoke to Jesus and they said, Master, tell us, when will the end be? And what will be the sign of your coming? Glory to God. And the Lord said, listen, you need to watch the time. Look at the time. The word of God said, redeem the time because the days are evil. He said, when you see these signs, look up because your redemption draws nigh. The word of God spoke about earthquakes in diverse places. He spoke about nation rising up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. My God, he talked about children being disobedient to their parents. Men being lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. They become God haters. My God, they become rude. My God, they become, my God, there's just so much evil going on in the world today when we look at what is happening in turkey so many people lost their lives we remember the tsunami that hit a few years ago in asia my god taking out mi millions of people we saw what happened to 80 in recent years thousands of people my god church it's time for us to look up Because these are the signs that are telling us that our redemption is drawing nigh. 
And if we see these signs, how can we not know that it is time for us not only to be getting ready, but it's a time for us to be in a constant state of readiness. Because at any time now, the trumpet will sound, but am I ready to meet the bridegroom? Have I separated myself? Or am I just going through the motion? Am I a chaste virgin ready to meet her groom? Or am I just going about pretending the part? It's a time for soul searching. It's a time for decision. It's a time for us to do the work that God has called us to do. It is a time for us to get actively involved in ministry and try to save the lost at any cost. We sit by and we say, boy, not now go on down a church, you know. Me not like how pastor do this, you know. Boy, me not like how the leader them are doing, you know. And we blame he, and we blame she, and we blame everybody else. But are we getting involved? Why don't you be the change that you want to see in the world today? Knowing that uh, the time is at hand. Why is it that we don't get busy and begin to avail ourselves uh, for the master's use? I'm not going to say it is easy. I'm not going to say it is easy for us to go through times like these. But the word of God said my grace is sufficient. And in our times of weakness, his strength is made perfect within us. Hallelujah. We can do everything through Jesus Christ who strengthens us. Brothers and sisters, if you don't know your purpose, you can fall on your knees and say, God, what is it that you would have me to do in this time and in this season? Because whatever it is that God has given us to do, he's going to judge us accordingly. When we read down in St. Matthew chapter 25, he spoke to those that he gave some talents. And to some he gave five. And to some he gave two. And to one another, another he gave one. My God and the ones with the five, they went and they got five more to it. And the one with three got another three to it. But the one that got only one talent, he said, My God, I know you're, a, you're an awful man. You're a hard man. You are what you want to sweep where you have not planted. And so he went and he hid the Lord's money. And at the day of reckoning, he had nothing to show. And because of his foolish choice, he was destroyed my god do not blame anyone brothers and sisters do not blame anyone for the choices that you have made there are many of us that we have been in church for a long time we have been walking this pathway for a long time but where are we in our christian walk where are we with what that which God would want us to do? Are we doing that which God has ordained us to do? Are we actively seeking to know his purpose and his plans for our lives? There are so many of us, we are not willing to do what it takes. Because to do what it takes, brothers and sisters, it means going the extra mile. Maybe it was not easy for those virgins to take their lamps and then to take additional oil. Maybe it was a little cumbersome for them. But they knew that in order for them to meet the bridegroom, they had to be ready. They had to separate themselves. How many of us are willing to do what it takes to meet the bridegroom 
How many of us are willing to separate ourselves? Sometimes it means losing some friends. Sometimes it means walking away from a particular relationship. Sometimes it might mean turning your back on a particular job. Sometimes it might mean that you're going to be ostracized. Sometimes it may mean that you are going to be marginalized. Hallelujah. But what does it profit a man to gain of the world and lose his soul? Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to stop playing church and do the work of the Lord. It's time for us to get involved. Hallelujah. 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 Saints, we are the bride of Christ. We are the church. And he has gone to prepare a place for us. And in the fullness of time, not even Jesus himself knows the day or the hour because he's waiting on the instruction of his father. <laughs> he's waiting on the instruction of his father to collect his bride. And once his father gives the go ahead, that's it for us, honey. He said in St. John chapter 14, verse 2 to 3. In my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you, I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me. And so will you will always be where I am. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 to 17, the word said for the Lord himself, shall descend from heaven with a loud command and with the voice of an archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first so even if we die hallelujah or we fall asleep before the sounding of that trumpet you we shall be the first one to hear the sound yeah. So even in death, even in death, the prepared bride is still prepared to meet her, her husband. St. Matthew chapter 16 verse 27 said, For the Son of Man will come in his Father's glory and with his angels, and he shall repay everyone according to what he has done what am i doing for the lord what is my purpose coming sunday after sunday what is my purpose sitting in the church of the open bible is it only because it's a sunday morning ritual or is it because god has a work for me to do what is our purpose is it only to occupy that particular seat on a Sunday morning? Your purpose many times is found right there in your workplace. Your purpose of a time is found right there within your family. Your purpose or purpose is found right there in our schools. But how many of us are declaring the righteousness of God? How many of us are standing on the side of the Lord? How many of us are identifying with Christ? How many of us, our lights are shining? How many of us, those with whom we encounter on a daily basis, know that we name the name of the Lord? But I want to say to us this morning that of our lives and if we understand our purpose, then my God, there is no doubt. My God, our light will shine wherever we are. 
people will see the mark of God upon us and know that we are Christians because of our fruits. We can't put light in a dark room and expect that dark room to remain dark. So even if you are the only little light in your neighborhood, continue shining. Even if you are the only light in your family, continue shining. Even if you are the only light in your classroom, continue shining. Even if you are the only light, hallelujah, in your workplace, continue shining. Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. We must understand our purpose, brothers and sisters. And if we understand our purpose, we must not, we must not only just be getting ready, but we should always be in a state of readiness. We're ready for any eventuality. There are some of us women, we walk around with a accoutrement bag. How many of us have that accoutrement bag? Or some of us don't know that, 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 that. Let me see those of us who know the word accoutrement. Ladies, let me see if you have a accoutrement bag. In your pan. That little bag there. But anyway, you got your stuff it down in other something. Eh? Well, there are some ladies, you know, who don't walk with accoutrement bag. But there are some ladies, man, the men bag don't leave them because they know their situation and anything can happen at any time. And so you always have your coachments. Hallelujah. Saints of God, we have to be prepared. Yeah, man, we have to set our houses in order. And so Matthew 25 verse 13 reminds us that we should watch. We should watch. So although the virgins fell asleep, they were watching. The wives were ready. Any day, any time, the bridegroom come, I'm ready. But the foolish, they could not dance to the same dance. They were not really singing the same song. They were not at the place that they should enter with the bridegroom. And so while we slumber, while we sleep, while we go through the rudiments of the day, ensure that we have our oils. Glory to God. And so oil is usually representative of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need the Holy Spirit. The Bible said the Holy Spirit lead us into all truth. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit lead us into all truth. He promised never to leave us nor forsake us. Oil is also a symbol of healing. Glory to God. It brings healing. The Holy Spirit brings healing and he brings restoration. St. Luke chapter 10 verse 34. Oil lights when it is burned in a lamp. Where the Spirit of God is, there is light. Hallelujah. Oil invigorates when we use it as a massage. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit invigorates us for His service. We want some people who want to get involved in ministry. Stop telling me about COVID. COVID is COVID and COVID did its work but as the church of God we are the people of God and we need to do the work of God COVID or no COVID Hallelujah Oil adorns when applied as a perfume the Holy Spirit adorns us and make us more pleasant to be around. Oil polishes when it is used to shine metal. The Holy Spirit wipes away the grim from our lives and smooth out our rough edges. 
So we cannot be a true Christian. We cannot be preparing or adequately prepared, hallelujah, in this time of slumbering, in this time of sleeping, without the Holy Spirit. It's going to take the Holy Spirit within us to say, Deaconess Butler, put on the phone now and come off of social media. You know, read your Bible from morning yet, you know. Although you're on the internet all day, Sister Butler, you know, read the Bible yet. You see how much hour you, uh, you, 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 you spend talking to Auntie Jean and your friend Joe, but you know, talk to the Lord yet. It's the Holy Spirit that is going to talk to us in these ways. It is the Holy Spirit that is going to say to us, young people, boy, the party are going over there, so. But if I know Jesus party, me can't party. Hallelujah. It's going to take the Holy Spirit for us to resist the temptation. It's going to take a double portion of the anointing for us to stand in these evil days. So therefore, brothers and sisters, a key component in our preparation is that we need the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. Hallelujah. Helping us to heed. Hallelujah. Helping us to know the mind of God. And how do we know the mind of God? It's by going into the Word of God. How often do we read the Word of God? How often do we take up our Bibles and hear what God is saying to us? I made a promise to myself some time ago. I said, Lord, before I check my WhatsApp messages in the morning, I want to read the word. Some of us, the first thing we do is on the phone. But brothers and sisters, let us covenant with the Lord. Let us covenant somewhere and say, God, I want to read your word. I want to know your heart. I want to know your will. I want to know your purpose for my life. And so, God, I must get in the word. I must spend some time on my knees praying. At one point in time, the disciples, when they could not drive out the demons, my God, Jesus said to them, Listen, these kinds go at not, but by fasting and prayer. We need to be praying, but we need to be praying, saints of God. And so this morning, church, I want to say to us, let us be like the wise. Let us choose the path of the wise. They knew their purpose. They understand their mission. They were deliberate in their preparation. Hallelujah. And also, they participated in the marriage supper. While the wise participated, the foolish perish. When they came knocking, the Lord said, listen, I don't know you. Depart from me, I know you're not. And so like those 10 virgins, the onus is on us individually, whether you're young or you're young at heart. Let us examine ourselves. Let us look at the choices that we have been making and answer the question this morning. Am I a wise virgin or am I among the foolish? Am I sold out to God or am, or am, am I just merely going through the motions? Am I ready to meet the Lord? It may not be the sounding of the trumpet, but by the God, it could be death that come upon us. The moment I'm here or you're here, this could be my last message. This could be your last message. Are we ready to meet the King? Because whether we are alive or we're dead, the Word of God said those who are alive and remain, there will be a reckoning. 
And for the saints of God, if we fall asleep, we will be the first to hear the trumpet and to arise to meet the bridegroom. Let us examine ourselves this morning, church. Let us be prepared. Let us separate ourselves. And let us enjoy the marriage. Let us be ready to go in with the groom. May the Lord have mercy upon us. And I trust that there is something in this word for us this morning. God bless you. What a word to our hearts this morning. Hallelujah. What a word, what a word, what a word to our hearts. Hallelujah. 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 If you don't have to leave this building before we conclude, outside of a dire emergency, I'm going to ask us to remain before we conclude. And I'll tell you why. I surrender all. fulfilled their purpose and they were able to participate in the marriage supper of the Lord. But the foolish birth, they perished. The choice is abundantly clear to us, my friends, brothers and sisters. It is incumbent upon us that we choose the way of the wise so we can indeed participate one day in this great marriage supper. We can fulfill the purpose that God has called us to and be prepared to meet our Lord and Master and Savior. You know, every time we come to church, we must remember that it is a huge sense of responsibility. We will be held responsible for every word spoken. We will never be able to say that we never heard especially as a people group called Jamaicans. We hear the gospel message over and over and over. So for us as Christians, we've been reminded to get involved, look around, see something in the church. And we can't do more than we can, but do something for the Lord. Fulfill your purpose here on earth. Not only here on earth, but fulfill your purpose here in this local assembly we all have a, a purpose here god has brought us all here as a part of his plan and purpose and so my friends i'm gonna ask us just to bow our heads and our hearts all across this place as we look to the lord talk to the lord where are you where am i am i prepared to meet my king if the sky should burst open and our Lord Jesus should come back to receive us. 
would I, would you, would we make it into heaven? After all the church coming and church going, would you, would you and I? And if we are not able to convincingly answer that question or answer that question in the affirmative, well, let us look to Jesus at this time and individually talk to him. Say, Lord, prepare me to meet my master, maker, and manager. Let us all bow our heads in our hearts in the quietness of this place as the Holy Spirit speak to us. While our heads are bowed and our eyes closed and we're praying, it is either we're going to meet him as the wise virgins or we're going to meet him as the foolish ones, those who participated, or we'll meet him as a frowning judge and will perish. If you're here today and you're not yet a Christian, here's an opportunity for somebody to say, Lord, I want you to take me home when you come or call me home. Our speaker says, it doesn't have to be the rapture, but it could be that God decide, well, I'm going to call you home. This is your last day on the planet. How would you meet him after hearing this very powerful message? What would be your excuse, my friend? So you're here today, you're not a Christian. Say, Pastor, I sense my need to surrender my heart and life to Jesus Christ. Please pray for me. We want to pray with you and pray for you. Just raise a hand and take it down if you are not yet a Christian. And we'll pray with you and pray for you. Is there one that will say, pray for me? I want you to think about it. I see the hand at the back there. Take that hand down. Is there another? There are more than one person in the building. Pray for me, I'm not a Christian. All right, while the others are thinking about it, praying about it, I want you to think and pray. We're going to invite you to come and to pray. Don't leave this place today as an, without giving Jesus Christ your heart and life. And you ask, Pastor, why shouldn't we leave? Yesterday, I was asked to speak at the Menavision Eastern Region prayer meeting. While I was driving there, the Holy Spirit said to me, pray, there's somebody there who has a relative that is not well and might have to do a surgery. Mr. Lorna, I said, but they never ask you to do that. Just go, and when it is time to speak, just speak and leave. The Lord actually gave me the name of the person. Went there, I saw the person. I said, but that man don't look like him have any problem like that. The Spirit of the Lord says, pray, do what I told him. And when I called him up just before I spoke, his mother is hospitalized. And it is not certain if she's going to do a surgery. So I prayed. And when, I, when the Lord spoke to me about somebody this morning and their marriage, and uh, when I heard a speaker this morning, you know, I said, the Lord, is the Lord, you know, is the Lord deep and scared? Yes. And uh, what the Lord told me to do after, you know, I said, Lord, is it so? And as I listened to the speaker talking about how People are prepared for marriages in other countries, in other jurisdictions. And even the text, you know, the bride and the bridegroom. I said, Lord, this is what you 
I am going to, this is what you want me to do. And if the person is here, the word of the Lord to you today is to stay put. What lies on the other side of your marriage is destruction of the highest order. And not only destruction of the highest order, it is slow destruction, said the Spirit of the Lord. So stay put. I'm going to ask all the couples here just, to, just, just, just stand right down that main aisle and come down that main aisle. So if your wife, husband is here, find each other, hold her hand and take her down that main aisle. Mm. When the marriage and the family holds, it will keep the family. When the marriages stay together, it will keep the church going. Is that an amen? Amen. When the marriages stay together, it will keep the country going. When the marriages are destroyed, it will destroy our country. Hold her hand. And those whose husbands or wives, their partner, is not here, we're going to ask you to come down behind them. So come down in twos like you took her down the aisle. God is doing a renewal. Is that all right? God is renewing a marriage. God is renewing hope. Give me a... Give me a... Technology and some people say, well, boy, we can stay home and watch church online. But can I tell you, as the speaker says, it's something that we need to move away from outside of an emergency, I believe. Because can I tell you, there's a move in the house of the Lord. Iron sharp with iron in the house of the Lord. You hear the man of God? Not in your house by yourself. Yes? And I dare say to those who are watching, many times you can miss the move of Almighty God upon that which God is doing at the time. And sometimes this move don't happen tomorrow or it don't happen next week. And you miss your help and your hope for your marriage and your family or that which concerns you. 
So I hear the argument, my friends. I hear the argument, brethren. Members of this church, we love you. And it's a good thing that you are online. But do remember that the move of God, I'm sure it can take, take place where you are, in your home, in wherever you are. But remember, it says, iron sharp and iron. And the man lift the countenance of his friends. How do you do that on the internet? And I believe, uh, this is what I believe the Lord would have told me to do. As we hear the, as I listen to the message. It might not happen again. And we'll soon close. But I will just read. I'm not going to ask you to say anything. So don't worry. But I'll read. This is actually the book that we use when we do weddings. And it says, Marriage is a holy estate instituted by God and commanded in Scripture as honorable to all who enter it lawfully and in true love. It was confirmed by Christ's solemn words, hallowed by his presence at the marriage feast in Canaan of Galilee, commanded by St. Paul to be honorable among all. All persons and set forth by the said apostle as signifying the mystical union between Christ and his church. And this morning we heard about the bride and the bridegroom, and he's coming one day. Therefore, it ought not to be entered upon lightly or unadvisedly, but thoughtfully and in the fear of God by considering that it was ordained for the hollowing of the union between man and woman, the increase of mankind, and for the companionship and help and comfort which husband and wife ought to have for each other. Into this holy estate, these persons come now to be joined. Well, they're joined already. So we'll, we'll miss out that part. And here's a prayer. Here's a prayer that we pray for the couple. Almighty God, Father of us all, we turn to you, giver of all good things, and humbly thank you for all the blessings of our life, especially at this time. We give thanks for the love and the concern of all parents and of all who have taught and guided and cared for us throughout the years, and for the love and trust which these, your children, come together now. We thank you, too, that you have appointed marriage to guard, to strengthen, and to make perfect this same gift of love. And since we believe that it is only, that it is only with your help that we can do anything well, we ask for those now before you the gift of the Holy Spirit in sincerity and truth that they may make and keep their vows this we ask in jesus christ our lord amen so brethren keep the vows if it is not you will you know somebody that is playing around Do you hear me? You know somebody that is playing around. And on the other side, it might look better. But the Bible says to tell somebody that, not the Bible, the Spirit of the Lord says to tell somebody that which appear, that which you see on the other side, is destruction of the highest order, slowly. Stay put. Honor God in your marriage. And for those who your partners are not here, continue to pray for them. When we have strong marriages, it will build our families, it will help us to build the church, it will drive the economy forward. Yes, the nations that have stronger marriages and family, they have better economies. Is that an amen? So hold on to your partner. Whether I'm saved or not saved, and women of Zion, you never walk together with the altar with nobody else.
two is a couple and three is a crowd. Any kind of intervention burned them with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Is that an amen? Amen. Yes. Don't stand and sit down and say the Lord give it and the Lord take it. Burn them out of your marriage with the fire of the Holy Ghost. That sounds spiritual? Yes, Sister Child, that is Bible. Yes, two shall become one. Three, it never said three. So anything else is a crowd. Burn them out of your marriage. Nobody come to pastor, call pastor at 12 o'clock at night. Get down on your knees and scatter any third party that think about it, come near to your marriage, warfare. Burn them out with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Remember the fire of the Holy Ghost. It can do the job. Is that an amen? Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Praise be to God. All right, you can go back. We'll allow the others to go, go, and then the couples go back together. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. When you couldn't do well anymore, you just separate and go. Anyway, praise be to God. Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for the Lord. Praise be to God. Your marriage will stand. Your marriage will work. Those who are not yet married, trust the Lord if you're interested. Trust the Lord if you're praying about it. Trust the Lord for your partners. Pray for them. And we'll see the hand of Almighty God. Praise be to God. Those who... Somebody raise their hand for salvation. Come. Come, so, so young man, come along. Young lady, come along. Come along. You want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Come. Come from where you are. That person that raises his hand for prayer, come, my friend. Come along. Come along. Come along. Put your hands together for this young man. Spirit of the Lord is speaking to your heart. Knocking at your door. Will you receive Jesus Christ today? Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? Shall we bow our heads in our hearts? Those who are at the altar, just close your eyes. This young man, this young lady. And say this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for today. I recognize that I am a sinner. Today I repent of all my sins. Today I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Shut your hands towards Jesus and come forward. Oh, Father and our God, we thank you for this young man, this little girl. We pray, O oh God, that you'll breathe upon them. Give them an appetite for a study of the word, the things of Almighty God. Bless and keep them. And we commit and we commend them to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Celebrate to the angels. The Bible says when one comes to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The celebration is happening. Please go with the counselors. Go with go with that. We're going to take the announcements.
Good morning. These are the announcements for February 26, 2023. Um, the OBSC of Jamaica, the beliefs. We believe that Christ was the Lamb of God, foreordained from the foundation of the world, and that by the shedding of his blood on the cross, he made provision for salvation for all men. And the scripture reference is 1 Peter 1, 19-20, and Isaiah 53, verse 5. So the announcements for this week are as follows. Please join us for Sunday school for all ages, discipleship class for persons who desire baptism, and membership class for those who are desirous of membership after this morning service. Reminder, our spiritual emphasis month under the theme, Redeeming the Time through the Love of God. The final session will be on Tuesday, February 28th, during our Bible study hour online at 8 p.m. Our speaker will be the Reverend Michael Hammond, and you are invited to join. Please invite even one person to join. The Zoom link will be sent out in the various church WhatsApp group. Visionet will be having a cake sale right after church this morning, so please support this fundraising event. There will be no Mountain Movers prayer meeting this Thursday, March 2nd, 2023. The MOV and Youth Department will be hosting a Jesus party on the church grounds on Friday, March 10, 2023 at 6 p.m. More details will come later. Reminder of our annual Good Friday Gospel Concert is scheduled to be held on Good Friday, April 7, 2023, commencing at 6 p.m. So please save the date and more details you'll hear later. Every second Sunday at 5.30 p.m., the men meet at the church, and on third Sundays at 4 p.m., at 4.30, you are all invited to join the evangelism team for visitation in the community as well. Youth meetings are held every Friday evening, except fifth Fridays at 7.30, face to face. The ladies, thank you for your continued support with the recycling project Please continue to drop off your plastic bottle. We encourage you to donate to the beautifully wrapped red love barrel, which is out every Sunday morning at the back. So take a tin, a box, a case, or a pack of non-perishable items to be distributed in those in need, to those in need. We are grateful for your financial gifts, tithes, offerings, or even love gifts. Please continue to remit same via online ABMs and the banking information is the National Commercial Bank University branch, and the account number is 4010944431. We kindly ask you to email the particulars to greaterfortmoreob at gmail.com. And for further information, please call the church office at the telephone number 876 502 5059 or 6223444. And they are open Tuesdays and Thursdays, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Fridays, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. The following persons have recently lost family members, so please remember to keep them in your prayers as well as their families. Sister Rose Wall lost a sister. Brother David Mohammed lost his mother and sister Dana Levy lost her father. The funeral service for Sister Dana Levy's father will be held on Monday, March 6th at 12 noon at the Brownstone New Testament Church of God in Brownstone, St. Anne. If you are interested, please leave your name with, with Sister Levy at the church office and the family is asking you to wear cheerful colors. Remember to pray for each other, our nation, the leaders, the sick and hurting, Sister Pelinda Palmer, Sister Claudette Blair, and Brother Amos Rudin. No, I've left the best for last. So we hereby publish the bands of marriage between Marvin Emmanuel Montage, Bachelor of the 
blocked 425 3 West to Greater Fort Moore, St. Catherine, and Theresa McLennan, Finster of Lot 33 or East, Greater Fort Moore, St. Catherine. If you know of any reason why these persons may not be joined in holy matrimony, matrimony please see the pastor. All right, thank you, Sister Brett. It is time for us now to worship the Lord with our gifts, our tithes and our offering. And we had given out some white envelopes, the 2,000 plus. If you have one, remember we said that we collect them at the end of the month. Here they are. This is to our it is to our building fund. And what we ask, we're, we're not asking you to reduce it, your tithe. But it is a faith offering to believe God for two thousand plus anything else for each month. And uh, if you look around you will see what we are doing with that. When you look at that piece of wall there, it looked like it was there all the time. But it is, look, it, it is coming from what that looks like to that. And so very soon, in short order, there will look like over there. And in short order, with our help and giving, we intend to put doors and windows on this side so we'll enclose the area and we are thinking of enclosing both sides so with the rain and the sun we won't have that to contend with so brethren friends if you did not get one of these the ushers have them so we are asking you please to collect same and if you have them this morning we will collect them and you can take yours next Sunday morning. Is that, is that an amen? And feel free to give to the work as we continue the work on the sanctuary here at the Greater Portmore Open Bible Church. We we'll thank those that have joined us via the World Wide Web and may God bless you and we look forward to seeing you next Sunday morning, God's willing. Thank you and God bless you.